Casey Gray here from The Conscious Builder, and on today's video, we're gonna compare the zip sheathing product to using OSB and plywood. This project here is a coach house, and the owners are Alan and Rihanna. They have some different goals than most people. So if you want to learn more about their goals and their reasons behind them, you can check out this video here. So we call this a coach house, but they are also called laneway houses or accessory buildings. And in order to fall into that category, there's very strict regulations with regards to setbacks, overall size, and the height of the building. Important lesson if you're working on the site in the winter, do not walk around or run with your hands in your pockets. If you fall, it's not gonna end up good. So this is the first time we've used this system. Uh, it is a weather barrier and air barrier integrated into one, and then the, you tape all of the joints with their trademark tape. We haven't used this in the past because we've had to order it by an entire pallet or entire skid. And it hasn't really made sense when we did the cost comparisons and, and the application that we were looking for. In this case, it made sense because of the overall design. We we're actually able to put it on the walls, put it under the slab because this is on piers and we could seal it all up. And then we could also bring it up over the roof because we don't have any eaves or overhangs on this project. So we can wrap this entire building with the zip sheathing and then tape all the joints it gets our weather barrier and our air barrier and we're completely sealed up and ready to go for our exterior insulation on top of this so in this project we did half inch on the walls and then we did five eighths on the roof and on the floor the five eighths is great on the roof because we have two inch on center rafters and when the team's up there walking and installing and doing what they need to do to seal the joints we don't see any flex in the board whatsoever a couple things to point out is they make it really easy. So the circles are eight inches. So if you have 16 inch centers, here's gonna be your, your, your 16 inch studs. Uh, but if you're going 24 inch, that's the square. So that's the center of the building. So you or center of the stud or the joist or whatever you're trying to hit, you'll be able to hit all of that. But another thing that's really important is that they actually don't want you to penetrate too deep with the nails, which makes it a little difficult. So that is a little bit of a downside here is because we're nailing, we're working with a natural material. If you put a nail gun, you could set it, could be good for one shot, but then the next shot is either too far out or too far in. So you do have to be a little bit careful. The team here started to set it all the way back. And if the nail didn't stick out or didn't go in too far, uh, wasn't far enough, they would just hammer it in and then they wouldn't be penetrating that weather barrier and air barrier. Personally, I'm less concerned about this being a penetration through the air barrier unless the nail comes loose, uh, but I would be more concerned about the, the weather barrier. Now, we have the added insulation going on top, so that's also less of a concern for me in this case because that water has to get through either the roof or the side, depending on where it is, has to get past the rain screen, past the insulation, and then to this sheathing here, and then leak through this little hole. So the chances of that happening are very slim. Another thing that I don't love about how this system is set up is that you're relying on tape for the joints. So yes, it sticks very well. We're not in a warm climate right now. You can see all the snow. It sticks very well, haven't had any issues. I just don't know how long it's gonna last. They've done all their testing, which is great. But once again, I'm not concerned about that in our application because of the added insulation, everything I just described. So it has to go, the water has to go through a whole lot before it's gonna cause any damage. And I really don't see that happening in this case. Now let's take a look at a basic price breakdown for materials only. Keep in mind that wood is a commodity and will vary in price from week to week. Half inch plywood comes in at a buck 37 per square foot. 7 16 OSB comes in at 55 cents per square foot. And for both of these products, we would need the Adhero product, which is a dollar 38 per square foot, which means that the plywood option would total two dollars and 75 cents per square foot. And the OSB option would total a dollar 93 per square foot. Technically, you could get better pricing for both of these options if you buy in bulk and depends on where you buy from and what your relationship is with the supplier. But this gives you an idea and this is on the higher end of pricing that you would pay. Half inch zip sheathing comes in at a $1.94 per square foot, which is on par with the OSB option is using at Hero. However, we also need to factor in the tape that is required for the zip sheathing. 
adding the tape is a little more difficult since it's not per square foot, it's per linear foot, but we calculated this at $6 per sheet which would add another 19 cents per square foot, which gives us a total of $2.13 per square foot for the half inch zip sheathing. In terms of the amount of labor required for this versus another wall assembly we were doing, this is going to be a little bit cheaper. I say cheaper because it's gonna take less time and we all know labor is not cheap around here. So the other way we would do it is with a peel and stick membrane. So here we have to be concerned about the nail going too far in and dealing with that. However, it is quicker than rolling out a peel and stick membrane and having to deal with that. Now, not gonna be a big price difference. It's gonna be fairly negligible in terms of labor cost for this project, because we do have to tape all of this as well. However, on a big home, this could be quite significant. Now, if you're gonna compare this to a product like Tyvek or Tyvek, this is a much superior product. The only places we use those products are on gables or any wall assemblies that aren't actually meant to be part of the main envelope of the home. In this case, the tape is warranted for 30 years, so we are happily going to recommend this product. Now, that doesn't mean that we're gonna replace the other product I was telling you about, which is the Adhero, which is the peel and stick product. Uh, it just depends on the application, depends on the wall assembly, depends on what the goals are for the project. So make sure you work with your clients and you choose the product that is best for them and for their project. For the builders and contractors out there watching this video, check out ConsciousBuilderAcademy.com. We're offering great courses for business owners and discounts on courses from Blue House Energy. Courses like Building Science Basics, Construction Technology, Envelope Fundamentals, and Net Zero Energy for new construction. Earn CPD and CEU credits and save 10% on these courses now through the Conscious Builder Academy. Link is in the video description below.